Electric vehicle enthusiasts take note. Tesla, the priciest option around, is seeing its stock dip just before an important company announcement. Meanwhile, GM has introduced a brand new zero emission engine that could render both electric and gas powered cars outdated. This revolutionary technology is touted as the next big advancement in the automotive world and is expected to drive us toward a completely eco-friendly future of cars. So let's not waste any time and check out this new way of thinking as GM's CEO announces this groundbreaking engine that will change the world. What exactly is this all-new technology? GM has been searching for an alternative to electric vehicles, EVs, for years, and their pursuit has led them to the all-new compressed air technology. Compressed air has previously been seen as having limited use, dating back to the 19th century with its application in mine locomotives and trams in some European cities, notably Paris. However, this technology has since been largely forgotten in favor of internal combustion engines, which offered immediate power and efficiency. In the early 2010s, the French car manufacturer Peugeot recognized the potential in combining compressed air with internal combustion engines, creating a new hybrid technology that retains the eco-friendliness of traditional hybrids without requiring a battery. Although these prototypes remained largely in the testing phase, they sparked considerable interest from the automotive industry, especially GM. Recognizing the potential of compressed air vehicles, GM understood that this technology required significant development to compete with conventional internal combustion engines and the rise of EVs. Consequently, GM initiated research and development of compressed air technology alongside their work on EVs and internal combustion vehicles. With that in mind, it's time to tackle a very practical question. How do compressed air vehicles function? Compressed air vehicles operate quite differently from regular engines and EVs. Instead of relying on a conventional piston-driven engine or an electric motor, compressed air vehicles utilize specially designed pneumatic engines, also known as compressed air engines. From a mechanical standpoint, these engines are quite similar to regular internal combustion engines. They use pistons, just like petrol-powered engines. However, unlike combustion engines, the pistons in pneumatic motors are connected to a spring. Instead of relying on an explosion to create piston motion, pneumatic motors introduce air into the chamber, increasing the pressure inside, which pushes the piston to its maximum length. The air is then released, and the spring to which the piston is attached pulls it back into its original position, thus completing the cycle. Generally speaking, the engine is very similar to internal combustion engines and can, therefore, utilize a wide array of technical solutions, shortening the development cycle, which is also what attracted GM to this concept. Now let's answer the most intriguing question. What are the benefits of compressed air technology compared to EVs and internal combustion vehicles? The most notable benefit is, of course, the fact that it is 100% pollution-free. It's simply pressurized air, meaning there is no environmental damage caused while it operates. As a result, compressed air engines address one of the most significant issues that traditional combustion engines present, direct pollution of the environment. Additionally, compressed air engines outshine EVs in this regard because making a compressed air engine is far cheaper and does not require air earth materials, unlike batteries or electric motors. Furthermore, powering EVs is not entirely green as the grid is still predominantly reliant on fossil fuels to produce electricity. Speaking of producing compressed air engines, another key advantage over internal combustion engines is the cost of production. Compressed air engines operate under considerably lower pressures than gasoline or diesel engines, which reduces the need for strong, hardened steel or metal. This makes them both more economically viable and eco-friendly to produce in larger quantities. While the differences may not be as significant when compared to EVs, they are still present. Moreover, it goes without saying that the running costs of compressed air engines are simply unrivaled. Compressed air is much cheaper than fuel or electricity and is also easier to acquire. Not to mention these engines will be 100% future-proof as they don't waste anything. They only use pressurized air that remains structurally unchanged after exiting the chamber. However, as promising as they sound, compressed air engines do have a few drawbacks that hinder their development and broader use. 
Are there any drawbacks to this technology? Unfortunately, there are several glaring issues associated with compressed air engines that have rendered them quite situational and even borderline useless in the past. The first problem is that compressed air engines tend to be extremely underpowered. Pressurized air has a very low energy density, which significantly reduces its potency. Additionally, because these engines have lightweight components and do not produce high amounts of pressure, their torque is notably lackluster, making them less usable in real-world scenarios. The engines also must operate at quite high RPMs, which, given that they are fully mechanical contraptions, leads to excessive wear on their components. Furthermore, because the engine does not use liquid as its primary propellant, incorporating lubricants is more challenging than in internal combustion engines. Nevertheless, the most significant issue that compressed air engines face is their extreme inefficiency. While this might seem insignificant, especially considering that compressed air is virtually free, this perception could not be further from the truth. Most prototype compressed air vehicles developed to date have a range of only 140 kilometers, which is less than 100 miles. This means that, first of all, you would have to fill it up constantly. Second of all, you couldn't reliably go on a moderately long trip, let alone a long one. Finally, there's the question of safety. Most prototypes used regular steel air tanks for storing pressurized air due to a lack of a better solution. This meant that the car, which was already gutless in itself, would be prominently less potent due to increased weight while also being susceptible to explosions if the tanks were damaged, as you were after all sitting on a bunch of pressurized gas. That said, GM has been working extremely hard on ridding this technology of its glaring issues, and they have been quite successful at it. First of all, the problem of the car's power has been solved with the introduction of new high-pressure air tanks. These high-pressure tanks compress the air even further, which translates into higher cylinder pressure. As a result, GM's new compressed air prototype achieves performance figures that are pretty comparable to regular gasoline engines. Sure, the torque isn't quite there yet. However, they're still powerful enough for a normal commuter vehicle. Furthermore, GM has also found a way to extend the vehicle's range. How well? by turning the vehicle's chassis into one large compressed air reservoir. However, this requires the vehicle to be specifically developed with compressed air engines in mind. This includes specific reinforcements or even the usage of composite materials, such as fiber reinforced thermoplastics. This allows the vehicle to retain exceptionally low weight while also being much safer than using regular high pressure tanks as crashing and rupturing the reservoir won't lead to an explosion no matter what. When will this technology be implemented? Well, the answer to that question is incredibly complex. However, there is a very solid possibility of these engines entering mass production in the next few years. This is because, as can be concluded, GM has truly invested itself in making this engine a reality. They keep researching and developing solutions to many existing problems and are incredibly devoted to creating a truly fantastic product that would revolutionize the automotive world entirely. Plus, the general mechanical familiarity and similarity to internal combustion engines allow GM to develop such engines much faster than if they were doing it from scratch. That said, it would be naive of us to believe that GM is doing this out of the goodness of its heart, as it is not. GM understands all too well that the days of internal combustion engines are numbered and they still don't have a foothold in the EV market. As a result, GM is looking for a way to create a new market of vehicles that would allow them to dominate other car manufacturers while also making obsolete both internal combustion and EVs to further secure their hypothetical position as the leader of the new automotive age. But as good as this all sounds, this isn't the first time a major manufacturer tried implementing compressed air into vehicles. As we've already mentioned, Peugeot 10 or so years ago made a hybrid version of their Peugeot 2008 crossover. However, instead of using electric energy, this vehicle combined an internal combustion engine with compressed air. 
The result was a powertrain that merged the power and torque of an internal combustion engine with the ecological component of compressed air engines. The said powertrain was able to achieve a whopping 120 mpg. Unfortunately though, Peugeot silently abandoned this project soon after it was conceived, despite the very good initial results. There were no explanations given, except that Peugeot said they didn't find the project profitable enough, which frankly doesn't make sense. So why did they abandon it? It's anyone's guess. However, we believe that it has to do with large oil companies, as such an engine developed and produced on a large scale could potentially run them out of business. And while this might sound far-fetched to some, it wouldn't be the first time that oil companies did something like this. Back in the mid 90s, Stanley Allen Meyer developed the water fuel cell, which, when fitted to a car, could effectively make it run exclusively on water. After Meyer went public with his invention, he was constantly pressured by large oil firms into quitting his development of the water engine and confessing that it was just a fraud. Meyer resisted and kept fighting oil giants while also searching for a company that would fund the further development of his water fuel cell. On the 20th of March, 1998, Meyer, alongside his brother, went to a dinner with two Belgian investors. At one point, Meyer ran out of the restaurant, screaming that the two businessmen poisoned him. He passed away a mere minute later on the pavement in front of the restaurant, with his brother by his side. And if that sounds weird, what's even weirder is that both the vehicle he was working on, as well as a couple of prototypes of this water fuel cell, vanished seemingly out of thin air from his home garage, shortly after his passing. Sure, this could all be just a twisted turn of random events. However, you will agree that it makes much more sense that oil companies are just too greedy to allow anything to eat up their profits, no matter how good for the environment it is. So GM, if you are listening, keep developing the engine in absolute privacy or else it might suffer the same fate as Peugeot's hybrid or worse, Stanley Allen Meyer himself.